Hello over there. My name is Moses Kuredeare. By the grace of God, I'm the president of Calvary Drama Ministries International that is based in Obomosho, Nigeria. <laughs> yes, thank you so, so very much for uh, coming to see what God is doing in our YouTube channel. Words are inadequate to express my personal gratitude and the collective gratitude of the entire Calvary Drama Ministries International for you coming to this wonderful channel. I trust God that you will be blessed and blessed and blessed, continuing to be blessed as you watch our contents, very powerful contents God has been releasing on this YouTube. Please, I beg of you, if you really love me, I know a lot of you people, I beg of you, if you really love me, I know a lot of you love me. You've been saying a lot of things, sending messages and expressing your love. Some of you even go to the extent of sending tokens to bless our ministries, uh, financial assistance to the ministry and to my life. The Lord bless you continuously. You will not miss or lose your reward in Jesus' name. Please, I, I want to beg you. Please, I want to beg you. I want to beg of you to, that you help us to do four things. Four things. Number one thing that I would love you to do for us is to watch the film. Watch it. Watch it very well. And then pass your comment on the comment section. It goes a long way to help us, to, to challenge us, to also help us improve and also know that people are watching our, our channel. So we want to, you to watch it and then pass your comment. That's number one. Number two, uh, please, we want you to share it with all your contacts. Any of the film that you watch there, share it with all your contacts. Not just few of your contacts, share it with all your contacts. By doing, by doing so, you will be helping us to promote the work of God in our hands. And I know that as you do that, as you promote the work of God, definitely God also will bless you. That's number two thing. Then number three, please, we beg of you to help us um, tap the notification. The notification, there's a notification bell there. Please just tap on it. This will alert you once we bring any new content into the channel. So you will know that, oh, Calvary Drama Minister has just... Uh, uh, has just put a new content into this channel so it will allow you the notification bell a bell just uh, tap on that bell and as you do that the lord will help you in jesus name then you then uh, finally which is very very important to us apart from you uh, watching it and passing your view you uh, commenting on it i mean you also uh, sharing it with your friends and your relatives and everybody then the final thing that you do this will surprise you is you pray for us please we need your prayers in Calvary Drama Ministries that as we do the work of God to the shame of the devil the Lord will continue to help us and to and to fight 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 for us as we go ahead exposing the works of the devil and don't forget to tap it just tap on the like just tap on it like it that will help us it will go a long way to help us the lord will help you in jesus name very importantly and finally it's more than three now four now very importantly and finally is on the subscription you subscribe to our channel hey as you do all these things you know that god will do all your things Write it down. As you do all these things, God will do all your things in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. You're welcome to this channel. <laughs>
uh, we appreciate God. All glory be to the Lord Jesus. Some of you text, you send text messages. A lot of you send WhatsApp messages. There are so many of you that uh, every week we communicate. Virtually every week we have to communicate. I thank you so much for the support you are giving to our YouTube channel. We also thank a good number of you that have been sending support, the nature support into our different accounts. We appreciate the what you are doing and uh, we pray that God Himself is the reward of those that diligently seek Him will reward Him in the name of the Lord Jesus. So today's message is very unique. And the movie you're about to watch is a very unique one. Why? The movie that you will watch and also pray. We know so much that there's a lot of blessings, a lot of miracles, countless miracles happen when the children of God pray. So I will be leading you through a series of prayers, through a series of prayers, and, uh, and uh, we have at least six episodes that you'll be watching, six different episodes. We yeah, will be looking very closely at the book of uh, First Chronicles. The book of First Chronicles. The book of First Chronicles contains twenty-nine different chapters. And the book of First Chronicles contains twenty-nine different chapters. We are not going through all those twenty-nine chapters, not at all. We are not even going through twenty chapters. I want to tell you that we are not going through ten chapters. And we will not even go through five chapters. We will not go through one chapter, we will go through two verses of the book of uh, First Chronicle. If you, if, you, if you are there, please, I want you to pick your Bible. Or if you have your phone, I want you to, 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 to check this. One important scripture, just two verses of the scripture, the book of uh, First Chronicles chapter 4. We are going to dwell on two verses. And in these two verses, we have six different movies that will be coming up to bless your life. The Bible in the book of um, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, has this to say. Please open your Bible. Uh, if you are holding your phone, take it up with your phone. What important? Well, it, it has this to say. I'm reading from verse 9. Verse 9 says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. With sorrow. Verse number 10 now. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. That thou wouldest bless me indeed. And enlarge my post. And that thy hand might be with me. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. What, what a great scripture. From chapter 1 to this point, you will discover from chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, this chapter 4, till verse 8 of this chapter 4, you will discover that people were just giving birth. <laughs> No stories, no uniqueness. People were just giving birth. This one began, this one began, this one began, that one. But when it comes to verse 9, the Bible says Jabez was more honorable. Now look to, to verse 10. So Jabez was more honorable. And the mother called him Jabez. He was again so good. In verse 10, Jabez made some prayers. And those are the prayers we will be focusing our attention on today. Praise God. Yes. Why should a mother call her own child a child of sorrow? Why? She went through emotional and very, very traumatic difficulties. And this episode one titled The Sorrow of a Mother is what I'm going to see now. The Sorrow of
are you dodging me? I've called your number severally, but you refuse to pick my calls. Is that so? Of course. Why should the devil fear your innocent mind and your beautiful face to believe such bundles of lies? <laughs> Why online will I not pick your call? Shadi, you are the best thing that has ever happened to me. The greatest day and the best day of my life it was the day I proposed winning marriage. Shadi, I love you so much. I love you from the very depth of my heart. Smile now. Smile. Smile very well. I'm smiling. You have smiled. To who? Definitely not to me. Shadi, your smile is just like the smile of the devil. Shadi. You are the ugliest lady I've ever set my eyes on. Ah, ah. How can a lady be this ugly and unkept? Costi, your breath is bad. I mean, you have a very bad mad odor. Shari, please, I repeat, never, never will you call my line. Get out of my sight. Shade. Shade, please turn back. Shade, please turn back. Please, please, Shade, please forgive me. I don't know what came over me suddenly. Please, Shade. Me? Never. After all those tons of insults, you disgracefully awed on me. How on earth do you expect me to turn back to you? Shade, please forgive me. Find a place to forgive me in your heart. I don't know what suddenly came over me. Please, please. Here I am. Shadi. Yes. Uh, sorry to tell you this. You have a spiritual problem. And your spiritual, that's your spiritual problem, is affecting your physical activities. Shadi, I will advise that you go to a church. Ah, or a mountain, <laughs> or a spiritual study, where the laws of evil, setback, failure, calamity, and captivity that's on you will be taken off of your head. Shadi, go and get all the load of evil that's on your head. Shadi, you have problem. Oh, ah, Shadi, you have problem. Shadi, you have big problem. Ah! Ah! Victor! What the? Ah! Ah! Very nice! Very nice, okay? Daddy, that was how Victor walked away from my life. After he embarrassed me, I almost committed suicide. I lost the dignity of humanity. I felt as if I was no longer a human being, but a dog. Pastor. Yes, my daughter. Remember that Victor's case is not the first, neither is it the second. As a matter of fact, Seven different brothers. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, daddy. Seven different brothers have proposed marriage to me and disappointed me at the very last minute. But, sir, I am a Christian. I mean, I am a child of God. I have fasted, prayed, I went for all manners of spiritual shakeups. I even slept on any mountain. 
things. Yes, all my warnings and efforts were efforts in complete and total futility. Pastor, is God fair? Is he just? Or is there any equity with God? My daughter, who are you to question God? Eh? Who am I to question God? We can question him. He does what he wants to do <laughs> in accordance with his will. But I know one thing for sure that you are in the wilderness of life. And in the wilderness of life, nothing happens normally. Everything in the wilderness of life happens abnormally. Spiritual laws and physical laws does not hold water. But Pastor, that was what you said when Matthias tutored me. You repeated the same thing when he told me tutored me. Pastor, with due respect, those words no longer make sense to me. They don't have a single sense of attraction. Actually, I came here to tell you that I want to have a break from Sunday service, Bible study, fasting, prayer, and so on. The theology behind those thoughts doesn't add up at all. The absurd is totally different. From the expected. Then observed different from the expected meaning? Meaning the miracles in the Bible and the promises of the Bible are only on the pages of the Bible. They are never observed. Yes, what we observe is totally different from what is written on the pages of the Bible. Don't do that. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living sooner than you expect. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Be patient, my daughter. Don't do that. Look at my eyes and read my lips. Let me go. I really don't want to get you thoroughly insulted. Your words are complete irritants to my ears. Where are you going? Where are you running to? Where else will you go if not to see Jesus? Where else? Who else apart from Jesus? You see, my heart is fixed. I am resolutely committed to live in a God that is not a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Bye bye, sir. Oh my God, that oh. The daughter of Ashake, <laughs> I greet you. We are not satisfied with your efforts. We gave you a delegated authority to cause 150 abortions in this town for this year. But what were you able to do? 
you were only able to recall 77 abortion. We also gave you a job description to make sure that there's a serious bloodbath in this land. What were you able to do also? You were only able to cause a mere bloodshed which led to sprinkling of blood. Let there be bloodbaths in this land. Let there be bloodbaths. Let blood flow everywhere. In summary, we are not satisfied because your evil atrocities in this town is grossly inadequate. I'm deeply sorry, my lord. I promise to double my efforts. I will graduate from causing one degree of traumatic experience to greater one. Please pardon me. Pardon, you say? Well, that is by the way. A woman named for Lashadeidu we soon get in touch with you very soon and she actually got your contact address from a friend named Mudupe Oshelem and this lady is desperately in need of a man and because of that just any man and just any man will do she could no longer wait for the one the man a lady married chose for her by the name Adeshola Laride and because of that any man, any, any man will be an alternative. I mean, a right alternative for her. Kulendede! 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 Can you give us the bow data of Adeshola or Laride? Adeshola or Laride was born 32 years ago. He got his spiritual about seven years ago. He's a medical doctor. A lady Mary has given him his own hospital. At 32, he's very rich. He loves the King of Glory with passion. He's very dedicated to the service of the Almighty. He said to meet the marriage committee of his church on Tuesday. That is the day after tomorrow. To seek permission to propose marriage to Falashadi. Mm. The union will produce three godly children, two boys and a girl. Together, they will flourish. They will be very rich. They will be no worldwide. As a matter of fact, the union will shake our kingdom to its foundation. No! 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 It must never happen. It must mm. never happen. It, it must, must never, never happen. happen. It, it must, must never happen. happen. It, it must, must never happen. happen. Can you give us the data of Sanyaolu Bamijoko, the man you intend to give to her? Sanyaolu Bamijoko, my man, that's my best alternative for Falashadi. Sanyaolu Bamijoko, He's a 45 years old man. He has divorced three women as wives. He struggled so hard to obtain primary school living certificate. He's actually a thief, but pretends to the world to be a businessman. Because he's a thief, he has some money to waste. And that money will soon attract for Lashade to marry him. The junior will produce a child. But that child will be a child of sorrow. That child will give for Lashade serious trouble, torment, and pains all through her life. We shall watch it happen. Yes. We, we must, must, must make, make it happen. happen. We, we must make it happen. We must, must make it happen. Go. No. You can't go, my daughter. You can go. You can't go to anywhere. You belong to Jesus. I'm here to help you. Jesus loves you, my daughter. You are a child of Jesus. You have nowhere to run to but to Jesus. Pastor, get out of my room. Pastor, I said get out of my room now. I can't go to anywhere because Jesus has gone to Golgotha. He died because of you. And he said, come unto me, all ye that labor. And I have you, lady. 
I don't need rest. I don't need rest, I said. I have had enough of rest as a spinster. I don't need rest. I need action. All I need are activities. I need a husband. Jesus is your husband. You are the you are you are you are, you are the you are the bride of the Lord. You are the bride of the Lord. Jesus is your husband. He will provide a very good husband for you very very soon. How soon is your son? Very soon. As a matter of fact, it is sooner than your son. Pastor, you are you are stupid. Your word, your word irritates me as in you are you are a nuisance. Pastor, I hate you. Get out. I said get out of my room now. How, how many times did I want to tell you that? You should get out of my room. Get out, leave me. Ah, leave me alone. Ah. Leave me alone. Leave my life alone. Ah! Leave my life alone. Ah! Mashadi, I love you. Though you abused me, you insulted me, you pushed me the other time, I almost broke my neck. But I love you, my daughter. I love you. I'm not your daughter. Don't, don't call me. I'm not your daughter. I know my father. When I see my father, I recognize him. You are not my father, Pastor. You are not my father. Get out. I said get out of my room. Farshadi, I'm not going to anywhere. I love you. You are my friend. No good father, no responsible good father runs away or leaves his son or daughter. Oh, I belong to this place. Yes. Indeed, you belong to this place. What did I say? You belong, you are right. Yes, I know that you belong here. No problem. Sit down there, okay? And leave your eternity here. See, this is the key. You will live here. I mean, this is where you will be. I promise. You belong to this place. No worry. You want to prove to me that you're an idiot. No problem. Stay there, okay? Idiots. Oh, yes. Shania! Please, open. Don't lock me. Don't lock the door, please. Don't, Don't lock the door. Please come and get me out of this place. Open the door. I won't open the door. I told you. You see, this is the key. Bye bye. Falachade, please come and don't, don't, don't lock me up. Don't lock me up, please. How many times did I tell you to leave me alone? But you insisted. See, this is the key. Spend eternity there. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> that was how I drove you out of my life. That was how. I drew Jesus out of my life. The very moment that I walked out on you was the very moment that Jesus walked out of my life. Pastor, the very day that I locked you up and took the key, that was the day and I locked up the joy of my life. <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> that day, I gave the devil a little shot. He took away my life completely by chance. <laughs> my life has descended. And he seriously into a beast. <laughs> You're welcome, sweetheart. I said I don't want your greeting again. Uh -uh. Yes. What happened? You are asking me what happened. Now let me ask you. For how long have 
have we been married? Six, six years, of course. Hmm. And how many children have you been able to give me for the period of those six years? Sweet that. What sort of question is that? You know as much as I, I, I do that, we are, we are still praying for sure. Ah, no. Mm. Two points of correction. Number one point of correction. Never, I repeat, never you call me your sweetheart again. What happened there? I say never you call me your sweetheart again. From now henceforth. And second point of correction. Never you bring me into your bad luck and battered destiny again. What do you mean? Yes. You see, marrying you is nothing but a waste of effort and resources. Ah. I'm telling you the truth. Waste of effort and resources. And let me tell you, I regretted the day I set my eyes on you. Sweetheart! Yes. Look, I've come to realize that you are nothing but a left-legged woman. What are you talking about LSS, here? Oh my, you are here. You are here, you know what I'm saying. LSOC, LSOC, Neo, LSOC. And now, your destiny, do you know the interpretation of your destiny? That any man, any man that marry you, ah, the bar. What is all this? What, what, what is all this? And backward never, forward never. Ah. But now, I'm warning you to be very careful with me. Now let me ask you. I've been married for the past six years. Do you know my job? Of course, we go to work and come back. That is a camouflage. Eh? Yes. That's a camouflage. My real work was confessed to you today. I kill for a living. It's so easy for me to kill. Yes. I kill for a living. I take pleasure in killing. Yes. And let me warn you. You have to be careful with me. What do you want from me? Anything you want, I will give you. Anything, please. I want nothing from you. Nothing. And I can never want anything from you. Because you are worthless. You are useless. You are rubbish. You are disgusting. Yes, I want something from you. I will give you. You give me. You give me. Yeah. That's good of you. I will give you. Yes. <laughs> Very good. I want you to pack. Pack all your rubbish and baggages that you call clothes. Ah. And leave my house instantly. Just... Let me tell you, I give you one hour. Just one hour before I come back. By the time I come back, I want to. I promise you that your mother will be responsible. Pack your dead body. Out of the way. Shh. Sh rubbish. Stay with me for six years. Barren woman. Empty barren. I will kill you. I will suck your blood. Daddy. The only place I could have gone to. Ah, was the holy place I did not go. You mean to the Lord Jesus Christ? Precisely, sir. When a man is in the valleys of life, all roads of escape seems to be a correct road. A drowning man. We hold on to anything just to avoid being drawn by the rivers of life. No matter the struggles of a drowning man, if he has not gotten hold of a correct object that can hold his weight, he will still drown. Hmm. Jesus is the only correct object. They can hold a drowning man. You are correct, Daddy. 
I made efforts to take the pieces of my life together. Two months after Bami Joko dealt with me. And I found love. Samuel was so loving. He was the best man any woman would want to marry. He was so loving, caring, and respectful. He treated me like a queen in his beautiful kingdom. What has only come over you? Oh, no, I can't take this anymore. You know, I hate to see you go through this pain. I'm feeling terribly obese. Perhaps the meal provoke the vomiting. I don't think it's anything too serious. I don't think so. Oh, no, 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 no. We need to get to the hospital right away. Come with me. We need to get to the hospital right away. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, dear. My love took me to the hospital right away. The doctor diagnosis was in sharp contrast with us. No food provoked anything. I was pregnant. It was exhilarating. It was great. Ah! We danced. We rejoiced. My dear, the Lord is wonderful. You're right. <laughs> this is a thing that other family waits for years expecting without having it. Thank God. And just in one month, ah, we have. We are expecting our baby. Ah, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. And because of this, I promise I'm going to take you to Tantalizer. I'm going to take you to Mr. Biggs. You know, um, Captain Cook, Mr. Fori Delicacy. Oh. Name it any entry you want me to take you to. I'm capable, you know. Right now, I'm overwhelmed with joy. Sweetheart, I would prefer you start from that. Mr. Foreign Delicacy. You mean it? Yes. That's okay by me. It's oh. not. Oh. Oh. You Jesus. are so good to us. Jesus. In all circumstances. In all circumstances. He Jesus. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Thank you, Jesus. I remember someone carried me in his hand like this. He carried me like a baby. Hmm. But in the midst of the tribulation, something happened that shook me to my very foundation. It was a disaster indeed. Then, do you know that that baby you are carrying is a baby boy? A male? No, a female. No. This thing I'm telling you, I've confirmed it in the place of prayer. I also had a dream that my baby is going to be a hell. Eh, okay. Let us agree. It's going to be a twin. One boy and one girl. Ah, so you are that too. No problem. That's agree. <laughs> agree though. No problem. And. 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 In what? And in what? And listening. Yeah. Listen. I've seen something in this pregnancy result that is amazing. What is amazing with the result? This result. This result. What is what is amazing about the result? And then why did you find your face? And what's your jubilation so about? What is it about the result? 
You cheated on me. You lied to me. That baby you are carrying is not my baby. You brought a bastard for me to father? Oh no. Ah. You are wicked. I really can't make a end or day of your submission. How and why will you be able to 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 when you know that you played me a double game? But you should Hold it! We married just last month. We slept together the first time last month. And that pregnancy result you are holding shows that you are three months old pregnant. Oh! Ah! Ah! I'm running mad right now. I'm running crazy. Ah! Somebody should help me. Someone should help me not to kill somebody. I don't want to kill somebody. No! I don't want to kill somebody. Ah! I don't want to kill somebody. No, no, no. I can escape. Explain what? Ah! Explain what? Ah, have you seen? Explain to me that you are an adult. No, no. Explain that I showered my love on you in vain. No, 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 no. Explain no, no. that I kept my body ah. for you while you were flexing around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Explain that I made you a signatory. To my business, why you were plotting my downfall and destruction? No! No, it's not what you think. I will tell you the truth. Nothing but the truth. Somewhere, you see, I relocated to Kumbo Shoye for me, Bado. You see, I had a bad marriage. The man I got married to molested. And the only defied me. I never knew I was pregnant to him, I swear. I never knew I swear with my destiny. Someone, I never knew until you took me to the hospital. I never knew. I said, David, please, do that. Believe me. Believe me, please. Okay, I'm praying. Okay. Okay. You want me to continue with the relationship after the realization that you will eventually give back to a bastard? You expect me to feed, nourish, and nurture another man's child <laughs> under my roof? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. In fact, that is gross stupidity. <laughs> Samuel, what do you want to do with my life? What I will do with your life? <laughs> I will throw you out of my house! Oh, oh, yes, oh, it's oh, it's oh. It actually threw me out. I lost an opportunity. I missed a love. I lost everything. Answer me! 
Look, in the next two minutes, if you're not done with what brought you here, I'm going to bas bastardize you. Mam Yoko, I am three months old pregnant. I am carrying a child. You are what? Yes, I'm carrying a child. Holy Moses. Holy Moses. <laughs> I did not hear you very well. You are carrying my baby. Yes. Inside your womb. <laughs> that is exactly the time you will let my face. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Give me a high five. <laughs> ah. Oh no, come, 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 come on, sit down. Come, come, come. Come, come. Wow. This is interesting. Do you know what? This is the greatest news I've ever heard since my sojourn occurred. Because no woman, I repeat, no woman has ever been pregnant for you. Six years you spent it. Why are you pregnant? You want it. But miraculously, now, at about the time I chase the pregnancy coming, <laughs> you don't know how joyful you make me. <laughs> I will find that to me. <laughs> this is what you call miracle. Miracle, baby. Miracle. I would name the child miracle. <laughs> give me, give me, give me. Shake me, baby. Shake me. Shake me, baby. Oh, is it funny? Yes. It's funny you saw this story. I'm just too excited. <laughs> hey, Mom Joko, it? it's, yeah. it's been. Are you sure it's funny? Yes. It's sure it's funny. Oh, very painful. It's funny. Mom Joko. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Yes. It's funny. Yeah. Oh, I'm just too excited. You see, you are. It's because you are so wonderful. Oh, I so. Nice. You are pretty. You are so excited. I'm joking. You are pretty. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. You're excited. You're excited. You're excited. You're You're excited. 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 You're you think I'm a compound fool? No! I'm an idiot! No, no lie! You decided oh. to go and pick a bastard in the ghetto. No, no lie! And now say you want to hang it on me. Oh. I will oh. use this oh. knife. Don't oh. remove it. I'm begging you. I will remove it here. Please! I told you oh. my pleasure is seen. Ah. I'm killing. I'm not lying. Eh? You are the father of this baby. I'm crying. I'm the father. You uh, tell me. I'm the father. Stand up. 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 Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yeah. Believe me. I want. I, that is why I believe you. That is why I'm doing what I'm doing. My heart is beating. It's very vital position. Stand up. Stand up. I put one hand on the floor. One leg. One hand. One hand. One hand. One hand. One hand. I mean, you could please this baby. Ah, you're not here spent one hour. Ah, I mean, you can go here and try it. I mean, you can say you are carrying bastard. I'm calling bastard. Uh -huh. Say it loud. I'm calling bastard. <laughs> yeah. Fine day. Uh -huh. Fine day. Uh -huh. That is my wife. <laughs> that is my wife. My leg is raining me. Are you sure it's raining? Yes. <laughs> it's raining. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs>
This work in order to be able to feed yourself. But see now, now I help you by giving you this uh, lucrative love. See how you paid back my goodwill. The very day you started with us, you broke a block. Definitely tomorrow you will break like 10 blocks. Now, listen, this is my judgment. You will not pay for the block you broke, but you will not go home with anything. And today ends your job with us. Please forgive me. Forgive me, sir. No, it is money. Since money, I have not tasted anything. I swear, just Tony. I felt suddenly dizzy. I'm so sorry, sir. Please, I'm begging you. I'm so sorry. I lost my gravity. Please, sir. Your mother, your sister, your family will know experience the pain I'm passing through. Sir, please forgive me. I'm begging you. Please, yes, sir, I know. That's all right. What? You almost moved me to tears. You will not pay for the block you broke, and you will also receive your pay. So. Take this 1,000 Naira. <gasps> Buy a tin of milk. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Then eat and find somewhere to rest for the for today. Thank you, sir. I will not do that again. <laughs> Oh, 
for my movement to the hospital. Hmm. Oh. Oh. I am Jabez. The son of sorrow. Daddy. <laughs> ah. I had Jabez. The song that gave me much pain. I had jobless. The son of Pami Joko, the most wicked woman being on it. Me. God, see my life. Ah, let, wait, let me ask you a question. Do you know the reason why I named you Jabez? No. You don't know? Because you are the reason for my disappointment. You cost me pain. You cost me sorrow. You cost me every unimaginable thing I can't even imagine in my life. Your father, that thing called Joko, is the most devilish person on the earth. And then, as I said, I'm not, I'm not surprised. The seed is in you. Unfortunate being. Unfortunate sin. I, I don't even I don't have any words to exchange with you. Now, I have some work to do in the house. Go to that room and wash all the dishes. And all the clothes that I put inside that basket. Wash everything. And those floors, those at the compound there and outside. Mopped everything, and when you are through, I have some works left at the backyard. And then, listen, when you are through with that, you see, I have some hand to go for me. Idiots, oh, come on, get out of my sight. Unfortunate being, may you not prosper. All the disappointment that you and your father cost me, ten times of it. Idiots, you are like your father. I will, every pain that you and your father have cost me, may you witness it. Ten times of it. I want my knocking on Uloshi. Idiots! Did I hear you say, is it possible for a mother to cause a child the way this woman did? Very possible. A lot of women have caused their children because of the pains they received. 
So many mothers presently now are cursing their children. Some may not verbalize the cause like she did, but a lot of women, some, some men too, are cursing their children right now the way this woman did. May you not be one of them in Jesus' name. The sorrow, the pain, the agony that will make you curse your child, may it never happen to your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of men have cursed their children during labor. As the child grows, a lot of men and women, instead of blessing their children, they've cursed their children. Now listen to me. You are going to do just one thing. The mouth you use in cursing that child, or the mouth you use in cursing those children, you will have a reversal. You will use the same mouth now to bless them. Begin to bless them. Say, children, I bless you. You don't mention their name. I bless you. So, especially, I bless you. All the negative pronouncements and enchantments that are pronounced against you when you were young or when you were, you were in my tummy, I bless you. Begin to bless those children. Begin to bless them now. Begin to bless your children. Those, that same mouth that you use in cursing them, that same mouth that you use in cursing them, use that mouth to begin to bless their lives. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Now, I want to tell us how to get out of this problem. The first thing is this, is sin. You must get out of sin. Sin will do nothing to your life but sink you. Sin, sin. The moment you see yourself committing sin, know that what you are doing is that you are sinking yourself. And you may sink yourself to destruction. If you don't want to sink into the abyss of life, then come out of sin. If you don't want to sink into the abyss of life, come out of sin. Because sin is the greatest destroyer that has ever happened to humanity. I pray that God will bring to the grace to come out of sin. Now listen, if you don't want to continue to be a victim of circumstances, then you want to become a victim of circumstances, you don't want to continue to be a victim of circumstances, come out of sin. I'm calling you wherever you are now to give your life to Jesus. Because whatever the prayers you pray, and you are still living in sin, Sin will continue to sink you and it will continue to make you a victim of circumstances and never a victim of circumstances. Are you ready to give your life to Jesus? Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Say, Father, here am I. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Let me pray with you now. Father, as many people that are ready to give their lives to you, wherever they may be, all over the world, I pray that you grant them salvation in Jesus' name. The grace to go and say no more will be their portion. As from today henceforth, remove their names from the book of death and put their names in the book of life. Begin to rejoice because your name has been written in the book of life. You are now a new creature. You are now a new creature. The Lord has saved you. Begin to thank God, appreciate Him for this wonderful gift of salvation. And I pray that you will not go back to your vomit again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now we want to pray. I have at least 17 prayer points that you will pray. And as you pray these prayer points, your deliverance will come in Jesus' name. Number one prayer point. Every deposit of evil implanted into my life and destiny, either in the actual or in the dream, in Jesus' name, every deposit of evil that has been implanted, that has been implanted into your life, they have to come out now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm praying for myself too. Every deposit of evil implanted into my life and destiny come out by fire in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come out, come out, come out in Jesus' name. Every agent, listen very well, every agent or agents wanting to cause separation between me and Jesus. So that they can penetrate to harm me. God, such agent, crumble in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every agent that is wanting to cause separation between you and Jesus. It may be an agent, it may be agents. Let there be such, let such agent crumble in the name of the Lord Jesus. Agent, crumble. Agent or agent, crumble in the name of the Lord Jesus. Number three. Every forces of attraction in the world that is attracting me 
wanting to make me look for another God apart from Jesus Christ. Listen, you attraction from today henceforth, you are gone, crumble in my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, I will not backslide. I will not look back. You see, all the experiences you are passing through now, the essence of those experiences to make you backslide. All the pains you are suffering now, one thing that the enemy is after, strongly fighting for, is for you to backslide and say bye-bye to Jesus. That is, the, that is the aim and objective of the devil. So you are going to pray, I will not backslide. I will not backslide. I will hold on to the faith to the end. I will hold on to the faith that was once delivered to the saints. I will hold on to the faith to the end. I will not backslide. I will not look back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, forces of darkness. Please listen very well. Forces of darkness wanting me to look away from Jesus so that I will marry another person. I'm talking to sisters now, those of you that are not married. Forces of darkness wanting me to look away from Jesus so that I will marry another man that is not the purpose of God for my life. Such forces. I come against you in Jesus' name. Begin to pray this prayer. Sister, you that are not married, pray it very, very well. Forces that is wanting you to look away from Jesus so that you'll be distracted. So that you'll not be able to... There's a man God meant for your life. There's a single man. And the intent of the devil is to make you lose focus on that man and marry another man. Say, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say that after me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I will never be married to a man that will torment my life. Pray that prayer. I will never be married to a man that will torment my life in the name of the Lord Jesus. I will never be married to a man that will torment my life. Wherever you are, you are in Nigeria, you are in overseas, anywhere you are, you are in any part of Africa, you are in Europe, anywhere you are, I will never be married to a man that will torment my life. Begin to pray that way. Spinster, I will never be married to a man that will torment my life. Brother, I will never be, you will never be married to a sister that will torment your life. You will never be married to a woman that will torment your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Bamidoko. Bamidoko is the great tormentor. You will never be married to a man that will torment your life. Begin to pray that way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Listen to me, brother. Listen to me, brother. You're not married. Listen to me, sister. You're not married. There is an individual, specific individual that God has assigned to your wife to marry you. Please believe that. Just one individual that God has assigned to you, to your life, that will marry you. But something normally happens. It is one thing for you. It is one thing for you to know the will of God for your life. It's very good. It is one thing for you, for the will of God to accept that you are, you are, you are God's will for his or her life. It's another thing. But let me tell you another dangerous aspect to it. There can be an exchange. Hey, my man will not be exchanged for another man. My sister, the, sister, the woman that I'm supposed to be married to, will not be exchanged. There will not be an exchange in the name of the Lord Jesus. Many people's lives, their true husbands, their true wives, have been exchanged. There will not be exchange in my own case in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that way. Pray that way. Pray, pray, pray that way. Pray that way. You are not married. Pray. It is better to pray than to be the prey. Many today are prayers in the hands of the devil because they refuse to pray. Begin to pray right now. I will not, my husband to be, will not be exchanged for another man in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now listen to me very well. By the grace of God, I have had a lot of experiences, especially marital experiences. A woman was to get married, very fervent in the Lord. Three days before the marriage, another brother slept with her. And she was asked, how come? Why should this happen to you? Why? I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. Now listen, you are getting set to marry. A lot of you are getting prepared to marry. Those of you that are getting set to marry, pay attention very, very well. Every meeting going on right now to frustrate my marital plans. The Lord frustrates such meeting in the name of the Lord Jesus. Some meetings are going on right now because of you. You may not believe it. Some people are having meetings right now because of you. Just to frustrate your marital plans. Every meeting going on right now to frustrate my marital plan, I frustrate you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You need to pray like that. Every meeting 
going on right now to frustrate my marital plans. I frustrate you in Jesus' name. Some of you must have heard this very unfortunate statement that, oh, sorry, I'm talking, I'm putting a doctor now. Some of you must have heard this very unfortunate statement, but you will not hear it again in Jesus' name. Sorry, there is no reason why madame should not give birth to a child. We check the womb, no problem. We check the fallopian tube, no problem. We check everywhere, all the genitals, everything is okay. But madame cannot give birth to a child. And the doctor will say, there is no reason why the, 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 your wife should not give birth to a child. But unfortunately, there are a lot of reasons in the spiritual. We are going to pray. Do you know one thing? That doctors cannot see spiritual cobwebs. They can see that. Doctors cannot see spiritual coverings. They can see that. We are going to pray right now. Every spiritual covering. Now I've addressed the spinsters. I'm talking to the married now. To the married woman. Every spiritual covering. Every spiritual cobweb. Every spiritual blockade. In the genital of my wife, that is preventing her from having a child. Such covering, such blocking, we remove now by fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I wish you pray. 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 You will carry your baby. Those blockages must fall off. Block it. Fall off. Coverings. Fall off. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will carry your baby. You will carry your baby. Enough of that unfortunate statement. There is no reason why madame should not carry a child, but madame is not carrying child. Why? Spiritual blockade. Fall off in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are having spiritual husbands. Say, so those of you that are not born again, you have spiritual husbands. Spiritual husbands sleep with you in the night. Some women will wake up in the morning and they will see some things that should not be there. I'm telling you what I've experienced. I will never tell you what I've not had. I've never tell you what I've not had. People have come to me with all manners of thoughts. So well, while I was sleeping, I, I, I was just having some struggles and suddenly when I woke up in the morning, I saw something in my orifices, in my genitals that was not there before. Spirit was born and dead with him. There must be a divorce. There must be a divorce between you and Spirit was born. Are you following what I'm telling you? Don't, don't talk with it. There must be a divorce between you and Spirit was born. If you do not divorce Spirit was born now, by the time you are married to your physical husband, there will only be a problem in the family. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. I'm talking to you emphatically. I'm talking to you truly. You're going to pray now. Connection with spirit husband. Every marriage that I've done with spirit husband that is tormenting my life right now, I separate that marriage with spirit husband in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, there's a divorce. There will be a divorce. There is a divorce. There will be a divorce between me and spirit husband in Jesus' name. Many of you women. Are like Fola Shade, the mother of Jabez. Yes, I'm telling you what I've known, what I've seen. Many women are like Fola Shade, the mother of Jabez. That time that you were laboring, and the pain was too excruciating and traumatic. What do you tell yourself? So, oh, what a child is being. Where should this child go? This pain is too much. And when the child was growing, what are the things you tell the child? I'm a Yoruba man from West Africa in Nigeria. It's a very common thing to hear mothers tell their children, say, you unfortunate child. They say, Olori Burubu Amo. Their own children, they say, Olori Burubu Amo. That's an unfortunate child. They cost the child. So say, oh Lord, he came. What sort of thing they tell their children, even when the children are growing? And you say you are not like Fola the mother of Jabez, many of you are even worse. Some of you that are in Nigeria may not agree with me. But I know that those of us that are in diaspora will definitely agree. <laughs> One thing that is very common with us in Nigeria is, oh, I want to go 
to UK, I want to go to Washington, I want to go to US, I want to go to UK, I want to go to US, I want to go to even the Eastern countries. That's what, the, that's what Nigerians want. That's what Africans want. But I'm telling you that some people right now, they are in UK, they are in America, they are in all manners of places, they want to come back to Nigeria. I asked somebody that I was praying for. She's in, she's in America. I don't want to mention the state in America that's where she is. Do you know what causes her cry? She cried to me, said, Pastor, oh, Pastor. I said, What is happening? She said, Oh, my traveling arrangement to Nigeria failed. I want to relocate back to Nigeria. I'm tired of staying in the US. The US that I've stayed for so many years, no husband. All of them. All of them are black Americans. You hardly see Africans that we want to marry. All our Africans are married. I'm now 42 years, no husband. I'm tired, I want to relocate back to Nigeria. And that is the same America that you are killing yourself you want to go to. Listen to me very well, listen to me very well. It is not where you are that matters to God, but your placement by God. It is not your place that matters to God, but your placement by God. A woman called me of recent, she's in the UK. And she said, I'm only dwelling in refugee camps. I'm dwelling in refugee camp. And they give me only peanut to eat in refugee camp. And she's in the UK, but in refugee camp. <laughs> Brother and sister. Brother and sister, agree with what I'm telling you that it is not where you are that matters. Elimelech and Naomi left. They left Judah for Moab. But at the end of the day, they went to, do, to Moab because they felt that uh, Judah is poor. Nothing is happening in Judah. So they relocated. They didn't seek the face of God before relocating. Do you know that that man died? He died in Moab. He perished in one. The two children who died in one. Only, only, only Naomi came back. <laughs> yeah, they, they just felt that they should be okay. Now, the point is this it is not where you are that matters, but your placement by God. Where you are now, is it God that says you should be there? Is it God that is asking you to be where you are now? Oh, I'm in America. Is it God that just going to be in America? I mean, is it God that just going to be in America? I mean, come on, show me. Is it God, what is God saying? It is not your place that matters, but your placement by God. And like I always say, like I always tell people, you may be in Canada and not have a car. Those of you that are in Canada, do all of all of us, all of you have a car? You may be in Canada and not have a car. You may be in UK and think you not be okay. You may be in Florida and not flourish. You have to be in Florida, but you are not flourishing. You may be in Washington and be washing things, washing dead bodies, washing road, washing clothes, you are in Washington. And you may be in Lagos and be like pushing the lagoon of poverty. Come to Lagos. Come, on, come to Lagos. Come and stay in Lagos. Lagos is where money is. But you may be in Lagos and be like pushing the lagoon of poverty. What matters to God is his placement. So you are going to pray, God, take me to the right place of my destiny. God, take me to the right place of my destiny. Where you are, may be your destiny. You may be in the right place. I will not be. It is your placement by God that matters, not your place. Please pray. God, take me to where you want me to be. That is the major point. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. You may be in Canada and not have a car. You may be in Washington and be washing things. You may be in Florida and not flourish. You may be in UK and things may not be okay. You may be in Lagos and be like, what should the Lagos of poverty? That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. We are going to fight now. We are going to fight. That's another point. We are going to fight the spirit of sudden death. I discovered that what happens in this end time is sudden death. Sudden death. Just say somebody. That, that man that we heard about him is dead though. Dead? Some will just stop and die. Some will just stop down and die. Some will go to their bedroom, wanting to birth, they die there. Somebody was driving and suddenly they passed by the roadside, rest his chest, dead. So dead. You will not die suddenly in Jesus' name. The spirit of sudden death that is destroying people in this end time will not destroy you in Jesus' name. They will not carry your dead body quickly, quickly, go and bury, go and bury, go and bury. You will not die suddenly, that's what I'm telling you. You will not die suddenly. Because people are dead suddenly. You are going to pray. Every 
power, every spirit that is killing people suddenly will not fall upon you in Jesus' name. It will not fall upon your family. It will not fall upon your church members. It will not fall upon your nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, sudden death will not be your portion. The Bible talked about it in the book of Psalm 91. He said, A thousand, a thousand, they fall, they die by your right. And 10,000 may die by your land, but it will not be your portion. But it will not be your own portion. You will only see it with your eyes, but it will not be your portion. I want to pray that God, as people are dying suddenly, every time people are just dying, 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 that will not be my portion. It will not be my, the portion of any of my family members. In the name of the Lord Jesus, prayers, prayers. Mark. Yes. You heard me. Mark. M A R K. Mark. This is the age when people are carrying marks around. There are two types of marks. Any person you see around have one of these marks. There are two marks. Anybody you see? Have one of these marks. The first mark is the mark of death, the mark of evil. So, evil mark will not be your portion in Jesus' name. From a carrying evil mark around, but they don't know. Evil mark that they will never marry. Evil mark that they marry, they have a child, the child will die. Evil mark that they are older will never prosper, and they will never prosper. Evil mark that when they are 47, they will die. People are carrying marks around. Even marks around. That will not be your portion. That will not be your portion. Jesus said, I want you to pray. Every evil mark that I'm carrying in my body, Father, let it be blotted out. And let the mark of Christ replace evil mark in my life in Jesus' name. Prayers. Let the mark of Jesus, the mark of Jesus, let it replace evil mark in my life, in my life, in Jesus' name. Mark of Jesus. Replace evil mark in my life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. It is well with you. The hands of God will be upon you. The hands of God will be upon you. You will not die suddenly. All those prayers, go and, go, go and play them back and over again and listen to these prayers and make these prayers and I can tell you that it is where we do in Jesus' name. What I've just seen thus far is episode one. Like I told you, more episodes are coming. The next episode, oh my God, it's going to be wonderful, it's going to be thrilling, you will also play. Just like we did now, you will play at the end of the next episode. Should I tell you the title of the next episode? I will tell you. Don't worry, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. The next episode is The Child of Soul. And I pray for you that you will not die suddenly. You will watch this next episode in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I also will not die suddenly. The hands of God will be upon us in Jesus' name. The broad title is The Prayer of Jabez. The one you have just watched now is The Sorrow of the Woman. Few days time. Just in a few days' time, you also be watching the child soul. God bless us in Jesus' name. Praise God. I want to welcome you again to this uh, wonderful, beautiful channel, Cavalry Movies TV. Uh, like I always say, I thank you so much for loving us in Calvary. Thanks for the prayers. Thanks for the support you've been sending. Some of you sending support very regularly every month. You're sending support. We appreciate you. We bless you. And I know that God Himself is already blessing you. We also want to appreciate you again for sharing uh, our movies to different people. It's such a wonderful and great thing. We must appreciate God for the testimonies that many of you have been sending in. You told us a lot of things. Some of you call my number to share testimonies of God's goodness. Some of you WhatsApp me very regularly. Some send text messages all over the world. All over the world. Thank you so, so much. And uh, we know that we have just started. 
we are just started. The Lord will continue to do greater and greater and greater things in your lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, uh, <laughs> you are now in episode 2. You are now in episode 2 of this very unique and very powerful drama series, uh, The Prayer of Jabez. We saw some few days ago, we saw the first episode. We talked about um, uh, the soul of a woman, the soul of a mother. You've seen the soul that that woman passed through, went through before she could have her child. We saw the soul of a mother, and it was such a nice one. But I want to plead with us. I want to plead with us. A lot of us have not subscribed to this YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not asking you all to only watch Free of Jabez and there are other very powerful messages, very powerful films in this channel covering mystery. Please go down, watch so many, many, many exhilarating, so touching, edifying movies, and your lives will not remain the same again. So, the summary of what I'm saying is that we beg of you to please help us subscribe further. You will not only subscribe, you press the notification button, you see a very just press, just tap it. And uh, anytime we have movies like this, it will have to it. Share them with all your contacts. Let the message pass across. Let it bless lives. And I know the Lord will bless with Jesus. Today we are going to see another very powerful episode, which is which is an episode you would like so much. Keep your finger crossed and what is the child of sorrow. And I'm sure the Lord will bless you tremendously in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My mother calls me the child of sorrow. Friends, everybody calls me the child of sorrow. Out of the truth, I live in the midst of sorrow. Why? But, sir, uh, I have a question. I'm on here. Yes. Ask your question. Why am I so poor? I work very hard. Even harder than my police. But at my age, I'm still a beggar. Why? Why? Your name. My name? How? How? A name contains purpose, promise, and possibility. Yes. A name contains purpose, promise, and possibility. That is deep, sir. The labor people gives you is not your destiny. What counts is what God costs you. Hmm. Your mother calls you a child of sorrow. Your friends call you a child of sorrow. The society, they don't have any other name they give to you than to call you a child of sorrow. Everybody calls you a child of sorrow. But that's not important. That's not what counts. They call you all these names and you are sad, but that is not important. What I'm saying is this, 
There is nothing bad in your mother calling you a child of sorrow, in your friends calling you a child of sorrow, the society calling you a child of sorrow. There is nothing bad in such calls. But everything becomes very bad the moment you accept that you are a child of sorrow. But, sir, uh, why? Why hasn't God visited me with his mercy? Even for a minute. My brother, don't say that. God has visited you several with his mercy. But you don't appreciate. That is the problem. <sighs> for God has given you the gift of life. Many are dead today. But God gave you the gift of life. God gave you some health. A lot of people are in the hospital today. Some are languishing in all manners of sicknesses today. But God chooses to spare your life. All your organs are functioning well. Yeah, some people they say, okay, carry them abroad. Kidney failure, liver failure, a lot of all these diseases. We don't have such a situation. You are not handicapped in any way. Your hands are working well, your legs are working well. You should appreciate God for this message, for his little messages. Do you know that some millionaires, billionaires are carrying a boat on which year? But that's not your portion. God is showing you continuously, not just for a minute. You should appreciate it. Sir, I've been born again for a few years now. I shouldn't be going through this. I shouldn't. I shouldn't be going through this. Yes, you are born again. As a matter of fact, you have been born again for some time now. But you have not allowed your salvation to cut across your name. Salvation gives you dominion over the oppression and the activities of the devil over your life. But the truth is this. The big question is this. Have you keyed into that? The Bible says, Thou shalt know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. In other words, the amount of freedom that you have is directly proportional to the quantity of the knowledge of God that you have. Your name is very important. Abraham, his name was changed to Abraham. Simeon was changed to Peter. Open the book, open the Bible to the book of um, Genesis chapter 32, verse um, 22 to 32. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the fourth chapel and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled him up with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let you go. He said, You bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob of Israel. For as a priest, as thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou art after my name? And he blessed him then. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as I passed over Penna, the sun rose upon him. 
And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost act after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Benin. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore, the children of Israel did not for the sleep which struck, which is upon the hollow of the town, until this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh. A supplanter, a trickster, a master in tricks. If you are looking for one man that is very, very good in tricks, you are talking about Jacob. But his name was changed when he encountered that angel. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. All the activities of Jacob, the fraudulent activity, the trickster activity, everything that is called Jacob in him was drained away. That divine frustration, that encounter in Iraq, drained away everything that is called Jacob. Life. And that is nothing but the symbolism of what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. Jacob became Israel. You must change your name. Your name must be changed. And you will discover that each time any of these people's name got changed, something dramatic will happen. It is always after a change of name that the blessing comes. There are some prayer points that I want you to pray about. Number one, you must pray. Good of you want to put them in prison. You must pray. God, change my name from Jabez to Israel. Change my name from being a child of sorrow to a child of God. That's the one. Change my name from Jabez to Israel. From being a child of sorrow to being a child of joy. That's the one point. Number two. God drain away all the activities and the limitations of Jabez. For my life. Number three. Every evil seed transferred into my destiny from my father's house. Let them crumble. Let them get crushed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Number four. All evil line, evil bloodline from my mother. That is causing contamination in my destiny. Let them be blotted out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every evil causes enchantment, negative pronouncement that is fighting against my destiny and my mother's destiny crumble in the name of the Lord Jesus. Number six. This number six is very important. Look up here. This number six is very, very important. You will be, it's a confession. It's a confession. Very, very important. People say, well, I've been born again. This number six points lies our victory as Christians. Many don't know this. They say, well, I'm still born again, and the devil is still tormenting me. The enemy is still doing this, he's doing, this, doing that in my life. He's still cheating on me. I confess Jesus, and yet I'm still seeing failure here and there. It's because we don't know. The devil said, knowing this, that our old man, knowing, is your knowing. So, and the devil says, thou shalt know the truth. And the truth is set to free. It is the amount of the truth of God that you have in you, the revelation of knowledge of God that you have in you, that will give you freedom. Eh? Thou shalt know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, 
now ask me why are Christians still in troubles? Why are they still battling with one challenges or the other? The two is because people have forgotten. Say, so knowing this, you must keep on knowing it. So, in your prayers, you must continue to, to, to emphasize and confess. You must continue in your prayers of confession. You must continue to emphasize and confess the fact that Jesus has set you free at Calvary. It is in knowing the truth of the reality of what Christ did for you at Calvary. That's what will give you freedom. Very important verses. Now, number seven. Anywhere you see cause, check out for sin. Anywhere you see cause, check out for sin. So you will pray. God, grant me the grace never to fall into sin. This is very, very important. In my Christian journey, God, grant me the grace never to fall into sin. And I'm sure that the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. My dear, I'm bothered with the life of Omolola, our only daughter. She will be 30 years old next week. She has never brought a man home. <sighs> Dear, what I've just touched now is the greatest pain in my heart. She's heady and good looking. Her business is flourishing. She goes to church, but she has never brought a man home. I desire you talk to her. She needs ways. Let her tell us what her problems are. You might be able to help her. Mm. Okay, sweetheart. I will do that. I will talk to her. Okay, thank you. Why are you crying? Stop crying. Your situation also bothers us. You are healthy. Your eyes, your hands, and your legs are not deformed in any way. You are beautiful. Your business is flourishing. But you have not brought any man home. What is happening? Omolola, what is happening to you? I felt bad. I felt as if the ground should swallow me up. I felt useless. I've lost the integrity of womanhood. I've never planned to exit 27 years before getting married. But look at me. I will be 30 years this coming Thursday, still in my parents' house. Mommy, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know. I don't know. It is as if the devil have pared away all the men from this world. And the very few that remain seems not to notice me. Four years ago, a guy proposed marriage to me in the night. I didn't seem to see his face very well. We had an agreement to meet here the following morning. Mommy, that was all of him I saw. Last year, 
a guy was showing a serious interest. What did you just say now? You heard me. I didn't hear you. Because I have never seen a situation like this before. A situation whereby a woman will be so stupid, so silly, so immoral, idiotic in nature, and open her mouth seamlessly and ask for the hand of a man in marriage. Ah! Why are you so callous and immoral? No, I was, I was. Act Shut up your dirty mouth! Eh, okay. I can understand you. Maybe you were pregnant for someone else and you want to hang it on me. Okay. You have failed, sister. Read my lip. You have failed. Do you know what you are telling me indirectly? You are telling me indirectly that if I marry you, you will never be faithful to me. You will be making passes at me, just as you have made pass at me. Idiot! Stupid! Ugly! I lot! Walk away from my sight! I say walk away! Walk away! Walk away! Jesus! You mean you went through all this? <sighs> oh God! Give my daughter the bone of her bone and the flesh of her flesh. Please, God. Please, God. Ah, God, please. People say I'm a child of sorrow. My mother called me a child of sorrow while I was young. She even told me she called me a child of sorrow from the womb. I carried the seed of sorrow from the womb till I was born. I managed to finish the primary school. But I dropped out in lessons too. What kind of life is this? The story of my life. The story of my life. Move from one degree of sorrow 
to a greater degree of sorrow. Why did my mother sleep with my father the day they conceived me? Why was I even conceived? Why didn't my mother say no to my father? The day they had me, why? Why didn't my mother abort my pregnancy? Why didn't she miscarry me? Why did she deliver me safely? Why didn't I die when my mother was in labor pain? Why? Why? Why didn't something terrible happen to me as a toddler? God, why didn't you allow me to die when I was growing up? Why you did this trouble? As if your pains would be my lot in life. Why? Why? I say why? I don't know my father. I don't know my siblings. I don't know any of my relatives. I don't know one. The only one I know is myself. Myself. No one. Nothing but myself. My mother rejected me. I gave her sorrow. I'm sorrowfully empty. I'm sorrowfully ugly, like a pig. What is the essence of life to me? It's better for me to go back and meet this wicked God. Or oh, what's the essence of life to me? What's the essence of life? Jerusalem, my soga city. My home will never die The central of my bliss Oh, happy place Where shall I be my God with thee? <laughs> To see thy face. <laughs> Oh, my 
What will you say you have nothing to do with us? Why we have not completely collected failure at the point of success? What about <laughs> insecurity and stagnancy? <laughs> have you forgotten that you'll be merry go round in a point year in, year out? <laughs> no! I reject that! I reject failure at the point of success. I mean, insecurity, merry go rounding at the point of success, year in, year out, I reject it. I don't need them. Okay. Okay, you can go. Wow, this is beautiful. What this beautiful garment and this fine crown? Ah, they are beautiful. <laughs> so why are you asking for the owner of these two things when you already said you have nothing to do with us? <laughs> you can go. <laughs> I can go. I said you can go. No. I can't go. Please, go. Please, don't let me go without having these beautiful garments. They actually belongs to you. Oh, great. This is your wedding garment. I mean, what is garment on you? It's a dark and now some. Every woman's favorite, caring, loving, lawyer, and responsible man will propose marriage to you. <laughs> and this is your crown of glory. Crown of glory? Yes, your crown of glory. But I already have a crown of glory. No. What you have is a cup of story, not a crown of glory. Are you not tired of telling story? With this cap on you, you only be telling stories without saying glory. Talk less of walking in glory and dominion. Listen well. A woman without his crown can never be married. You know, a man is the head of a woman. A man is the crown of the woman. Without this crown, you can never get a man to marry. Please. Give me this crown of glory. Good of you. But you must be ready to relinquish that cup of story that makes you keep telling stories without achievements, dominion, and a man to marry. Are you not tired of living such a lifestyle, a life without marriage, without a man in your life? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes. But I'm afraid. Let me wear the two. No. It is impossible. You cannot wear the two. If you indeed really need this crown of glory, you have to do away with that cup of story that keeps you telling stories. Without an achievement and even a man to marry. I don't need this again. I don't need you again in my life as from today. Please give me this crown of glory. Good of you, good of you. Now, have your beautiful crown of glory. Wow! This is beautiful. I now got it the original. This is beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God
I'm Pastor Mrs. Tolani Sandra, the wife of Pastor Sandra of Hallelujah Sanctuary. So you are the wife of a pastor? Yes, by the grace of God. My husband is a pastor. I was just passing by and the Lord dropped a message for you. I'm all yes, ma'am. The Lord said you are yet to marry. Yes, ma'am. The Lord said, you are just a religious person. You are yet to be born again. No, ma. That is not true. I go to church very regularly. I pray. I pay my tithe so seriously. In fact, I've done water baptism and I love Jesus. <sighs> my sister, all you said is a typical characteristic of a religious person. Salvation in Jesus is an encounter. There must be a day in your life when you deliberately and consciously give your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He will come to your life and transform your life completely. My sister, are you now ready to give your life to Jesus? I said I have done so. I said I go to church. I'm not a fanatic and I will never be a fanatic, period. Well... The love of God is without repentance. He will definitely do what he promised to do in your life. What will he do? He will give you the desire of your heart sooner than your expectation. But you must give your life to Jesus. Secondly, the type of person God wants for you may not be exactly the man you want for yourself or the society want for you but mind you don't despise the person he's the one that will make your glory to shine thank you ma uh, please take this 500 naira for your transport uh, don't worry my sister i don't need transport money my car is there. Yes. The Lord led me to this street purposely because of you. Thank you.
check of five million naira and for the welfare of those innocent babies. Just be expecting us. We'll be there soon, my cousins. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Sepro Mission Ministry. Yes. I spoke earlier with Brother Victor. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's just about our intention to support what you are doing. Yes, we just agreed that we'll be dropping a check of 10 million naira to support your work. We'll be visiting soon, today, by God's grace, with my wife. Yes. No, just, just to appreciate God in your life and as a motivation for what you are doing. We know there are a lot of souls on the field and you are really laboring to bring them in. So we'll be visiting soon by God's grace. God bless you. Say me well to profit. Thank you. Where are you? Huh? Sweetheart, what's, what's keeping you? I've been waiting all day. Uh, yeah, I've, I've called the person in charge of the uh, Jesus is Good Motherless Baby's Home. I've spoken with her. Then I've also called Sepro Mission Ministry. Yeah, and I told them, just like we agree, they'll be visiting this evening. No, 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 I've not called him. I'll call him once I drop the call with him. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, you know we agree to visit three places, but there is another set of people God dropped in my heart a few moments ago. I know, I know, and that's what I'm doing now. Okay, I apologize for that. I apologize. Yeah, this set of people had neglected servants of God. But they are very effective. I know you will ask. I know. Zino the Lola, I know. This neglected set of people have Thank you, my sweetheart. Yes, what I'm saying in essence is, I'm thinking, if you agree with me anyway, that we just share 10 million naira with 10 different drama ministries, just to encourage them. I love you. I'll be waiting. See you soon, my dear. Thank you. that people call the child of sorrow. Can my life ever receive a transformation of such magnitude? A child of sorrow distributing money to people and ministries in millions. Huh? What a dream. Is there a woman that will ever be willing to marry someone they call a child of sorrow? I don't think so. No. No. No woman will be willing to get married to me. Someone everybody calls a child of sorrow. I doubt it. I doubt it. 
I doubt it. My sister, I actually don't know how to start. Start anyhow, but make sure you are snappy about it because I'm in a hurry. Um, I have a dream. A dream? A dream? About what? I'm just an usher in the church, and I don't think I'm the right person to share your dream with. Why don't you see the pastor? I've totally seen him, and he said I should see you to share the dream with you. Eh? Me? You mean pastor said you should see me about your dream? I don't really understand you. God said we will form a future. And he said that future will be very glorious. You have said nothing. Please hurry up because I must get to somewhere very fast. Or I should go? Um, actually, if you will not be hungry, ma'am. God said, we will form a family. And he said, you are the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Me? Who is the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh? Um, Look up! Look at me face to face! Who is that person you are talking about? Who is that woman that you said God called your wife? It's you, ma. Me? May dog eat that your mouth. I genuinely your genuine. Amy. Oh my God. Why should you open your eyes and see this evil happen to me? You. You of all people. What is evil that your name? Jabez. Oto. <coughs> Do you even know the meaning of your name? You are a child of sorrow if you don't know. Everything about you is sorrow. You are completely nothing. I mean nothing. You are an article of no present and future. I would have broken your head with this thing. Let me warn you. Never you cross my path again. Never you come near me again. Idiot. He told me everything, and I prayed about it. And what did God tell you, sir? Did God tell you I will be getting married to his child of sorrow? No, 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 no. It's not a child of sorrow. That was the name the mother gave him. But the good news is this. We have reversed the name. He's no longer a child of sorrow. You see, that's where at the point of marriage, People make mistakes because people marry what they are able to see and not what God saw. And what you are able to see presently is not as important as what God, God is saying, what God has seen and what, what God will still see. Hmm. That's why I pity many intending couple who want to get married. <laughs> they won't make their choices based on what God is saying. They won't ask God. They won't go to God. I mean, they won't go to God for prayers to know what the mind of God is and what their monitor life. They just make their own choices based on what they're able to see at the particular time. You see, the children of Jesse, if they are paraded for a king to be chosen, obviously everybody 
wanted Eliab to be the king because Eliab, Eliab was a was an handsome man, was a tall man, was everything. As a matter of fact, David was non consequential, he was not paraded among those to be chosen, but eventually. <laughs> David was chosen because he was the chosen of God. All the others were disqualified. And David became the king. I'm very sure you will remember the story of uh, King Assyrius and the wife Vasiti. When Vasiti messed up and she was deposed, and a new queen was to be chosen. Oh, all manners of women, all manners of ladies came to be chosen as a new queen. <laughs> but to God, none of them qualified. Only a slave girl, only a slave girl was eventually chosen. Why? God saw what she was carrying. God saw, even though she was a slave girl, God saw what she was carrying that has not manifested at that time. But God knew that with time, it will manifest the same thing. It is true that his mother called him Jabez. It is true that the relation of everybody called him Jabez. It is true that our brother Jabez is poor. Our brother Jabez is not very educated. Our brother Jabez has what you will call the worst thing of life. But that is not very important. Because that is what his presence is saying. His presence situation is telling you that. But what is carrying? The thing that is carrying is more important than his present situation. And I think that what an individual is carrying is more important than the present situation of a person. It may not manifest now, but it will manifest. Let me tell you this. God is telling me, if you agree with the will of the Lord, if you agree with the will of the Lord in marriage, by the time the thing that Brother Jabez, that's the name you call him, the potential that Jabez is carrying, that potential that Jabez is carrying, if you allow the will of God to be done in your life, that potential that Jabez is carrying will consume every negative thing that has run to your life. And you'll be very, very, very happy. By the time that thing that our brother is carrying, <laughs> by the time it manifests, you'll be married that you have married. You will be happy that you have married him. By the time it manifests, you will be happy that you have married him. Nonetheless, I want you to still go to the Lord in prayers to confirm what God has told me. It is well with you, my sister. Shabbat. Ah, oh, terrible, dangerous, hazardous. Lola is about to have a crown of glory. She's about to get a crown of glory. In exchange for a cup of story. Oh, this must not happen. Oh, it must not happen. It will not happen. It must not happen. It can never happen. No, never. Uh, good afternoon, ma. Who is your ma? I'm not your man. You, this man, I've warned you. I've warned you never to cross my path again. And what else are you looking for? Shed on the kilo shell gun. I'm not your man. Who is your man? Good afternoon, my sister. I'm from the pastor. He said he has seen you. I've told you never to cross my path again. I've warned you. Shed on the kilo de gun. So you and your pastor are working in collaboration to drag me into your net, Abby? You have missed it. It is fail. See, let me tell you. You go and tell your pastor that I've turned my back against him. You and your pastor, you are evil. And you will not see me in your church again. And instead of me falling into your trap, I would rather remain unmarried. 
and don't let me see you near me again. Don't ever cross my path again. Idiot. I said go. 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 What are you looking for? Go. You are dead. Go. Go. Sir, that was my encounter with her. <laughs> you see, when the devil covers the eyes of a man, the man will not be able to see appropriately. Give the person food, they will think you are giving him poison. Greet the person, you say, no, 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 this man is causing me all, he's causing me all. Once the devil blinds the eyes of a man, the man will not see a proper thing. If he's seen good thing, he will think he's seen bad thing. Hmm. No matter what, I will still love her. I will still continue to show her love, even though she calls me evil. The father of the prodigal son did not reject that boy when the boy comes back home. He accepted him with open hands of love. A good shepherd will leave Nate in a sheep to go after one sheep that was lost. I will not leave her. I will still go after her and show her real love. As for you, there are two things you need to do. Two things. Precisely. What are these? Sir? Number one, I want you to give her a distance. The Bible says, wisdom is profitable to direct. Yes, we need wisdom in all that we do. I want you to give her distance. Don't visit her. Don't give her a call. Don't send any message, either normal text message or WhatsApp. Just leave her for a while. Because the Bible says, wisdom is profitable. Number two. I mean, the second thing, sir. Yes. I want you to read the Bible with the book of uh, Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse three to four, and read. But if our gospel be hid, it is he to them that are lost. Invoke the God of this world that blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Who is the image of God should shine unto them? If the gospel be hid, it is each to do some apparition. Because the God of this world has blinded the heart of those that should believe. And he does not want them to believe. It is not in their interest to remain unbelievers, but the God of this world has blinded their eyes so that they will not see the glorious light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. The Bible says, let her kill it. But the spirit of life, the spirit of God, give it life. Every original preacher, every original preacher must know this. Once you preach without prayers, the preaching becomes nothing but ordinary letters that kill it. It cannot give life. And that is why every child of God, every preacher, every evangelist must.